Skyfalls, the third Daniel Craig James Bond movie, came out four years after Guam was Solace. Before I get into it, I want to say this is going to have full spoilers for Skyfall. If you haven't seen Skyfall, don't watch this. Unless you don't care about spoilers, then by all means, watch my videos. I don't care. But for real though, spoilers for Skyfall, you've been warned. Going into Skyfall, I was still very excited for it. Despite being very disappointed by Guam was Solace, I still love Daniel Craig in the role. Then I heard there's a new director, Sam Mendes. I didn't really know much about him or his previous works. I heard they're pretty good. I was like, all right. New director. It's been four years, so there's been time in between these movies. They could take their time on this. Let's see how this goes. I did not expect to be blown away by this movie. Right off the bat, the opening action sequence reminded me of the action sequences at Casino Royale, and that's all I wanted. No stupid quick edits and no dumb close-up shots and no stupid choppy shots and edits that make my head explode. But for real though, the opening action sequence is fantastic. It's awesome. It's exactly why you love the action in Casino Royale. It's non-stop, it keeps going, and they add more and more cool elements. And there's a lot of wide shots and practical effects, and it feels very real, and it feels awesome! Bond's on a motorcycle, and he's in a bulldozer, and he's on top of a train. It's all over the place, and it's great. It's put together so well. Then we end this action sequence with M making the difficult decision to tell Money Pay to take the shot, even though she might hit Bond. But this terrorist has this drive that has all the identities of these agents. So it's very important that M, she feels like she's responsible if these agents get hurt, and she probably is responsible if they do. So she tells her to take the shot, and Bond gets hit. And I love that long pause where it's just very quiet in M's office, then we hear Agent Down. And we open to probably the best Bond song ever, Adele's Skyfall. It was great back then, it's so great now. Right off the bat, what's great about Skyfall is we get more and more characterization for M. Judy Dench always does a great job in these movies, but this movie really gives more character to M. Everything that's happening links back to her. We'll get into the villain later, but all the stuff that's happening links back to her, and you can tell it's affecting her. I love when Bond's playing dead for three months. He's taking shots of scorpions on his hands. He's just boozing around. It's great stuff, and it's funny. And then he comes back when MI6 gets attacked, and this is when we get really deep in the Bond's character, and it's great stuff. It's back to what Casino Royale wanted to do with the Bond character. They want to dissect it. They want to get really into it. This movie is an alcoholic. He has a substance problem, just like in the novels. There's obviously something in his past that's traumatizing him, and one of the reasons why he became an agent. It's great stuff, and you really could tell that Bond is getting old, and he's kind of slowed down a little bit, and all this stuff with alcoholism and stuff is really affecting his work and that scene with Q is great the dialogue is so good and that's what's great about this movie the dialogue is very smart it's very witty and it's interesting you're so invested in each scene because it's written so well the conversation Q and Bond have when they first meet is so great you're completely invested in the whole conversation they're always chasing after the guy that he was fighting on the train I have to point out how great the cinematography is in this movie. And of course, Roger Deakins is behind it. But I will say this is the best looking Bond movie by far of all time. Everything looks perfect. Each shot looks perfectly framed. Everything's colorful. Every scene at every location, every sequence has a distinct color palette and look and it's perfect. It's great. Roger Deakins is a master at this. He goes to the casino, everything still looks great. I love that long shot of him talking the money penny on the earpiece and he's like walking past her and the sound mixing kind of changes. I like that stuff, it's great stuff. I will say though at the end of this whole casino place, he gets in a fight in this dragon pit and I always thought the CGI dragons were so stupid. I don't know why, they always just looked weird to me. They looked out of place in this like realistic gritty Bond movie. It's these stupid CGI dragons. I don't know, it looks dumb. Maybe I'm overanalyzing, but I think it looks fucking stupid. Especially when he jumps on the dragon to get up. Like, I don't know, it looked cartoonish to me. It was cool though when the guy picked up the gun and he couldn't shoot it because it has to be coded the Bond's fingerprints. That was cool. Then we're introduced to possibly the greatest Bond villain of all time, Silva, played by Javier Bardem. And oh my God, he is such a great villain. The opening shot on him, that long take of him telling the story about how to get rid of the rats on that island and how him and Bond are the last two rats because they're basically the same person is flawless stuff. We learned that he was an MI6. He's basically just like Bond. He was the best MI6 agent at the time. And then when Silva's captured, he talks to M in the next scene. It is such intense stuff. You learn this backstory about Silva and M, how M basically turned over Silva because Silva was doing his own thing. He was kind of going rogue. Kind of like what Bond does a lot of the time. That's why Silva and Bond are kind of the same person. And Silva feels very betrayed by her. 
And I could see why. I mean, anyone could relate to that. That's pretty fucked up stuff. He takes a cyanide pill and it messes up his face. Like, you start to really feel for him because you see where he's coming from. And that's what makes great villains, when you always can see where they're coming from. But then when Silva blows up the train station, he's going to the courthouse where M is. And Bond is running through the streets of London. And there's just, like, chaos in the background. That epic music's playing. It's really like a Bond moment that doesn't feel like James Bond. It just feels like an epic movie. Because you're so driven by these characters and how great the story is so far that you just really get sucked up into it. And it's a great moment. And then the courthouse shootout. Now, this sequence does not get enough credit for what it does. If you pay close attention, not one shot in this whole sequence is wasted. Every single shot has a purpose. And it's placed perfectly and it's edited perfectly. It is literally night and day compared to what Kwame Salas did. It's insane how much they improved upon everything. The editing, the shooting, the writing, everything is literally the complete opposite of Kwame Salas. And that's the moment where I was like, we are really back in the James Bond movies that Casino Royale wanted to move forward with, but Kwame Salas took a million steps backwards, but now we're back on track and it's awesome. Bond and M have to go rogue and then they do the nice little Easter egg with the Ashton Martin car. Because Skyfall came out 50 years after Dr. No, so it's the 50th year anniversary and they do throw a little Easter eggs in there. It's not too fan servicey. It's like love letters to the old school James Bond stuff and it's good stuff and it's not over the top it's great and then we find out what Skyfall actually is it's where Bond grew up and this is where the movie takes a huge risk and that's why I give credit for this movie it takes risk because we go back to where Bond grew up we learn a little bit about his parents a little bit about his upbringing and that could have really derailed the movie that could have made the movie terrible that could have pissed off Bond fans but no it works everything really works because they don't go into it too much but you get the idea and it makes sense, it fits well with the character. And during this whole time, the relationship with Bond and M really starts to grow even more too. You really see that Bond looks at her as like a mother and she looks at him like a son. It's some good stuff, it's some good characterization, it's some great development. Then we have the final action set piece. And it's great, a lot of people don't like it. I don't know why, I think it's great because it's grounded and it's pretty realistic. And it really feels like a final set piece in a Bond movie. I could see this being like the final mission in one of the video games or like Nightfire or something. Bond and them have no supplies. They have some shotgun rounds. They have some dynamite. As guys start coming in, Bond starts taking their weapons and gets more firepower. It's some good stuff and it's intense too. You really feel like people can get hurt which I'll get into in a second. And the helicopter shows up and it really feels like the final action set piece of a movie or a video game. It's good stuff and it's not too over the top. And great explosion. Great explosion, I don't know why. I think it's a great movie explosion. It's not too crazy, it's like perfect. And we get the scene where Silva is in the church with M. His reaction to when he's finally next to her, he can finally kill her, is some creepy and chilling stuff. And the music there is great too. You could tell that M was a huge part of his life. He really did trust her and she really did hurt him really badly. You can really tell the rage that's just driving Silva throughout this whole movie. Then Bond throws a knife in his back and he says the line, last rat standing, perfect thing to say considering the story that was told earlier that M dies in Bond's arms and it's pretty sad stuff. For Skyfall and the Daniel Craig saga, it's really sad stuff because you did feel that relationship grow and develop and it does feel like Bond's watching his mother die. And it is a sad line when she says, at least I did one thing right. It was something like that. She's talking about Bond. And it was a good farewell to M, because she's been in a bunch of other Bond movies. It was a good farewell and a good tribute to the character. Especially since it was the 50th year anniversary, they're not going to end the Bond movies. There's going to be more Bond movies forever. But it was nice to have some sort of closure with the movie that is doing a 50th year anniversary celebration. The movie basically ends, and I don't, for some reason, like the ending that much. I wish there was a little bit more for some reason. The ending of the Casino Royale is still one of my favorite last scenes ever in a movie. So I wish there was something kind of like that, but I get with how the narrative went and how the plot went, there's nothing they could really do. I just felt like it was kind of underwhelming, like the final shot of the movie. I don't know, maybe I'm just nitpicking a little bit too much, but just saying. In the end though, Skyfall is great redemption for the Bond franchise. With everything that went terribly wrong with Kwame Salas, this was an important movie to get the Daniel Craig James Bond movies back on track. You can really tell because of that four year period, they took their time. They got great screenwriters, they got a great director, they got Roger Deakins, because they have great source material for this character. They knew James Bond was an interesting character, and what drives these movies to make them great is not the action set pieces. Those are nice compliments to a great story. 
Like I said in my Kwame Sauce review, James Bond isn't supposed to be an action hero. He's supposed to do badass things, but he's really a deep and interesting character. And this movie explores that even more, just like what Casino Royale did. And they finally got back on track, and it feels like we were really watching the true sequel to Casino Royale. This is my second favorite James Bond movie ever. It's not as good as Casino Royale, but it's really damn close. I'm going to give Skyfall a 9.5. Man, this was like 40 times better than Kwama Solace. It's like really not even close. I can't even believe that they're in the same series. <sighs> and with Spectre, I don't really remember the movie that much. I saw it once in theaters and I really didn't like it that much. So we'll see. I can't think that I would like it less than Kwama Solace. I feel like that's impossible. I have to like it more than that. But we'll see. So, Skyfall, let me know what you guys thought of it and where it ranks in your Bond movies. Thank you guys so much for watching. Click here to see more of David Dave's takes.